and uh, very close knit. You might they might live in New Jersey, but we're still close. <laughs> we communicate especially by the Spirit. So good to have you here, Mary. Thank you. God bless, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, we're continuing the series out of Mark 16, and I'd like to have you turn there. Mark 16. And th this is uh, part... Oh, I didn't put it in. I think it's like part eight. Yes, part eight of this message. And it's very troubling because the world knows what we're against, but they have no idea what we're for. Yeah. And uh, we're, al we're always pointing the finger at people that don't obey the Bible. Well, how can they obey the Bible unless they're born again anyway? And I believe our message should be one of love mm -hmm. and one of hope. And once you get born again and you have the lover in you, then things begin to change, but it doesn't happen overnight. Your born-again experience happens overnight, immediately. But you still have the same stinking thinking. And it's a process of working out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's not talking about this. He even said he loves our soul when we sang that song this morning. Our natural man that's fighting against God this morning. And some of us this morning, we can break through... Others are thinking, oh, what are they happy about? Or, you know, but it's all about, Shirley said it, he loves me. It's about me. And this morning, it should be about me. Everybody say that. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how on earth are you going to take care of anybody else? Amen. We wear ourselves out helping, but we forget to take care of ourselves. We need that time with God. All of us do. Amen? Amen. And so I'd like to, because uh, I think it's been a week or so since we've done, done this, and I want to praise God for what happened Mother's Day with you ladies. That was awesome. And, and Elder Marge just reminded me, we say a simple little thing here. If you have your swords, you can raise them. You don't have to stand. You've been standing up and down like praying, playing church this morning. Oh, Wanda wants to stand for Jesus. Amen. What do we say? The Bible is God speaking to who? To me. Say it again. The Bible is God speaking to me. Then we say it in Spanish. La Biblia es Dios hablando me a mí. In Navajo, I cannot say. And we have to say amen. And they are what? Life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. You may be seated. You know, we were... Uh, talking in leadership this morning and Jack had a story that I just want to share because what happens as we get older in the Lord uh, I noticed uh, one of our young ladies here this morning was just crying uh, during worship and so I asked her I says you okay yeah is this is this happiness in the Lord yeah do you remember those days when we had those days yes. have we left our first love <laughs> what it says. The first church says you left. I know your works. Al, I know how hard you're working and how much you love my people. But you've forgotten one thing. You've left your first love. And we can get so caught up in the cares of the world. You know, uh, with this stress with my daughter right now, you can't imagine what that does to, to you. And you've got to go beyond that. You've got to fight the good fight of faith even when you don't want to fight. Amen? We're at war with the devil. Yes. And he's doing everything he can to take away our joy. Everything. And so, anyway, this is what children are like. They were, this was many years ago when we were in Tempe before, and Jack was doing Sunday uh, nursery, and one of the little boys came up, and Jack says, you know how I got, he wanted to know how the beard, he got the beard, he says, well, it came, my hair came <laughs> off here, and went down here. And so, now think about little children, right? Right after church, that little guy runs right to his mother and says, You know, Jack, he, his hair fell down on his back. <laughs> can you imagine if you believe this this morning, what we could do in him? It, it, what do we do? Well, maybe this or uh, maybe that or... 
it could be, but what if we got to get the what ifs out? I didn't say you, we. And I want us to read this as a new book this morning. Brand new material. Amen? And so I'm going to start in verse 12. And after that, this is right after the resurrection, he appeared in another form to two on, of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Jesus said over and over again, I've got to die and I'm coming back. If I don't die, I can't send the Holy Spirit to you. Not one of them believed it. How many times have you heard people say, I wish I would have been here when Jesus was here doing all the miracles. None of them believed it. And this morning, the question is, I love what you said, do we really believe? You know? Do we really believe? And, and we don't want to make it a church thing. We want to make it a God thing. Amen? And he says, later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief. Why did he rebuke their unbelief? They didn't believe those that were sent to him. And I want you to get that this morning because it, in Matthew 10.40, it says, if they receive you, they receive me. And if they receive me, they receive him that sent me. Amen. That's how important you are today. You've got something to give. The world is dying. Amen. Amen. Oppression is destroying us. Cares of this world is choking the word of God and it's becoming none effect. It's still strong in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That can't change. But your mind can change it. Your mind can say, Man. Yeah, but if you just lost it all right there. Yes, I can. Man. Yeah, this morning I can believe the gospel is true. What is the gospel? What is gospel? You know, the translation is good news. So this is good news. Yes. Think about this. If you receive what I'm saying today, that means you receive Jesus. And if you receive Jesus, that means you receive the Father. And when you share Christ with somebody, if they don't receive it, they can never, standing before God when he's looking for their name in the book of life, they can never say, well, how come nobody ever witnessed to me? Well, do you remember that Sunday morning when you were in church and that bald-headed preacher was preaching? That was your day. And you, and you neglect it. See? And so, what is our day? My Bible says it's today. Today is the day of salvation. What do I need? I need something today. I need something to make me stronger so I can look at the powers of darkness and walk through in light. Because the powers of darkness are all around us. But when we walk into a room, it should expel. It should disappear. But if you don't believe that, why should they? They're laughing at us. And their hardness of heart. And that's like a, a person that has nothing to give. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, these miracles, these wonders will. How many of you know it says will? What does yes. that mean? It will. Uh -huh. Will follow. What are they supposed to do? Follow who? Those. And the Greek says those who have believed. So you have to have been a believer to believe this. See? And these scriptures are real. We can prove them through the rest of the Bible. But see, our natural mind can't accept this. And these is going to say five things that we should all be doing, and they follow us. You know why? We're not following the signs. They're following us. We're following Jesus, who's the sign giver. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we're going to see things happening. Amen? Amen? Amen. We take our eyes off Jesus. Remember the boat? Here's the boat over here. <laughs> they went to work. Nobody's in the boat. 
They went home. Anyway, Peter's the only one that got out of the boat. Why did he fail? Got splashed. And he looked at the circumstances and he fell. And what happened? Jesus comes up to him and says, you have little faith. So if we would keep our eyes on Jesus, because the splashes are hitting us right now. And if we look at the splashes, that water is so cold. <laughs> when I was a kid in New Hampshire, oh my God, I hated getting into that water. It took everything I had to get into that lake. But once you got in, it was okay. See, why don't we try this once we get into it? But start, this is a faith day for us to start believing so we have hope, Carol. And what's going to happen if we have the hope? We're going to have the love of God that's going to prove it. Amen. 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 So he says, and these signs, these miracles and wonders will follow those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. Isn't this amazing? The first thing we're supposed to do is cast out demons. I love asking pastors, how many demons have you cast out? Huh? How about you? How about casting out those that are harassing you right now? You've got the power. They will speak with new tongues, and that's a language you not, cannot acquire. Here it is, right here. Jesus is saying you're going to speak in tongues, and a language you don't understand. So why argue it? Believe it. I don't care. After reading all this, if I didn't know any better, I'd just go, ba 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 Lord, I'm speaking in tongues because I sure don't understand what I'm saying. But you said I was going to do it. And you know what? He would come through, and instead of stammering, I'd start speaking in tongues. But I have to exercise the faith. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And the only place in the Bible where a serpent bit anybody was the Apostle Paul. And guess what he does? This poisonous snake, it says it grabbed onto him. Now, you know what we would have done? Ah! Call the emergency room. Call the hospital. Or Jesus' name, come out. <laughs> Didn't even bother. Amen. You know why? He knew where he was going. Amen. He knew he had to go to Rome. That, no snake was going to stop him. No demon was going to stop him. Amen. See, where are we going? <laughs> you, you're here for one reason. To get equipped to go out and do. Amen. <laughs> and if they drink any deadly... Uh, it says, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They're not, they're not talking here about letting a rattlesnake bite you, and if you don't die, that means you're saved. They're not talking about this stuff. Okay, basically, uh, poisons in the Bible are dealing with doctrines of men. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's a promise of God. But do we believe that when we're praying for one another? Pray ye one to another that you might be healed. And then I want to go to verse, uh, after the Lord speaks to them in verse 20. And this is what we're talking about today. And they went out. The key is, and they went out. Here's what, here's what I tell people. If you're going through something, if you've got a sickness, whatever it is, pray for somebody else that's sick. Mm -hmm. Pray ye one to another that you might be healed. That's going out. I, I made a list this morning about uh, things that we can do to go out. Like number one I put down, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify God. Are you glorifying God in everyday life? Are you glorifying God in your, in your marriage? Amen. You know? And, and people see us. Because we're shining. And what do they see? When Gandhi said, I would have become a Christian until I met one. That's scary. You know, because we're pointing the finger. No, we need to point a finger at us. We're the ones that need to look in the mirror. Because we have no right point a finger at anybody. We need to judge ourselves first. Or examine ourselves. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Confirming what? The, what a, the word. Not you. This is what I love about it. 
It's not you he's confirming. It's the word of God who is Jesus Christ. And so what happens when you go out? And we've got to start moving. You know, we get in our little pity patties, you know. Oh, the world's just got me all tangled up. The devil's got me down and all that stuff. Well, what are you doing about it? See, the Bible says, for to me, it says, I'll submit yourself to God. Amen. Resist Amen. the devil and he will flee. And if you look up that word flee, it means he doesn't even exist anymore. So it's up to me. It's up to me <laughs> to walk in this light. You can be born again all you want and be miserable the rest of your life. You can be born again, go through all kinds of hell, and they have the joy of the Lord. I've seen people in horrible, die horribly, and yet they had the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. So explain that one. Go over to Matthew, book off to your left. Matthew chapter 6. Well, let's start with chapter 5. In chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its favor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city. Now I want you to picture, uh, okay, let's take <coughs> South Mountain. I, I, since I've been out here, Mary, when we first moved out here, there was two towers, I think, out there, two light things at night, because we used to go to a Silver Dollar drive-in. And I always looked, I would see those things beeping. Now there's all kinds of them. And you can see those towers almost no matter where you're at in Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, imagine a city up there. we got a city up there. That city can't be hid. See, you're trying to hide in the world. You can't. <laughs> you're shining even when you don't know you're shining. Amen. And they're watching you. Amen. People are waiting for somebody to live the life they're saying. Amen. Right. I'm serious. They're, they're, they're hungry. That's why there's so much drug addiction. That's why there's so much pain. It's because they're empty inside and they don't know why. You're empty until you get Christ in you. Amen. You know, it says, you'll thirst no more. I'm thirsty right now. What is he talking about? I'm not thirsty because I've got him in me. But my natural mind is constantly fighting me because the enemy is always talking, always speaking. A city is, that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in that house. Let your light so shine before men they see your good works and glorify the, your Father in heaven. And I've had people say to me, you know, like, ever since we've been in the ministry, uh, we've gone to Mexico. I used to go to Guatemala. Uh, and we've been in many places and very few people have ever come with us. And Elder Pete, one day, he decided to come with me, and he's been coming and going ever since. And he said to the Lord one day, why me? And the Lord said, because you did. <laughs> and that's the way everything is. You say, well, I can't do this. Well, when was the last time you gave to missions? If you can't go, you can help send. See, that's going. People don't understand. Going doesn't mean, you know, everybody thinks, no, we're not, I don't believe we're supposed to be preaching on the street. You're going to hell. Do you know the rapture is coming? You're nothing but a bunch of filthy sinners. We're still sinners. So what are they talking about? Not righteous, no, not one. So how can I tell you you're a sinner? We all are. Up here. Down here, we're okay. Now we just got to get this guy to agree with this guy we're in. <laughs> right? <laughs> But see, it, this, the, the gospel is too simple. That's why we can't handle it. I just Somebody just got saved at the altar a couple of Sundays ago, and, and they didn't know what it meant to, be, to get born again. I said, open up your mouth and ask Jesus to come in and forgive you. Did I see an expression and a change of their, their face? Yes. That's, that's it, right there. We want to make a religion... Out of Christianity, God doesn't want a religion. A, re a religion is man's way. Christianity, his way. He's, I, don't, I don't look for God. He's already in me. Now I just need to find out what direction we're going. 
And I have to believe all things are working together for good. Who? To those who love God are called according to his purposes. And look at chapter 6 and verse 33. That's probably the key to all of this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What are we supposed to do first? Seek the kingdom. That's him. And, and you know his word there, that word his righteous, that's El Shaddai. That's what El Shaddai means, his righteousness. We're to seek El Shaddai first and foremost. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Think about that. Did you, did you ask him to acknowledge you coming to church today? Did you acknowledge him when, you, when you're going to get ready for work? He, they went out, the Lord working with them. See, we don't work for God. We, it's a partnership. We're a team now. Can you imagine, uh, you know, you see this a lot of times, like a basketball player, the one guy, he's the superstar, he gets, makes all the baskets, and the other guys are just kind of... And usually they never win. Because there was no team effort. That's what I love about Jesus. We are a team. And if two of us shall agree as touching anything. And if you're really on the team, you're not going to pray for something that's impossible. You're not going to pray for something that you, you know it's going to lead to sin. Come on. We're supposed to have that kind of common sense. And they go to chapter 10. And it, just notice something. Because we're talking about going out. And notice what he says in verse 6. Now remember, they're not born again yet. Okay, everybody say that. Amen? Amen. Okay. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And, I, and the Lord showed me one day, I believe, that this is anybody that's going to be saved. There's a lot of people you're going to talk to. They're going to kind of shun you. They don't want anything to do with you. But you're going to meet some people that are going to listen. Amen. They're... They're already written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but they don't know it yet. <laughs> I believe in the last days we're going to know them that are going to be saved. And we won't waste time in areas that... Why put your money in that area when nothing's happening? And as you go... Oh, there it is again. What did, what did they have to do? They had to go. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay? How important are you? See, you're his chosen vessel. We have this treasure in earthland vessels. Look at verse 40. He who receives you. Think about this. He who receives you. Who, me? Yeah, you. He who receives you, receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. Isn't that powerful? That's how important you are. You're a vessel to bring the light to someone. And then go over to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Remember, they're not born again yet. But there's something about that name. <laughs> Amen. And this is what I love. When God sends you, He's already gone before you. People don't understand that. You know, that, why do we say pray there before you get there? Because the work's already done. Now all we got to do is carry it out. Amen. And then when you know that, my God, it's simple. Verse 1. After these things the Lord appointed... 70, others also, and sent them. Now, that's more than 12, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, you gotta, you got to get this this morning. If, they, if the 70 could do it, imagine what you can do with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right. They just had the name. This is powerful if you get it this morning. Amen. I want to get this this morning. <laughs> the Lord's dealing with me right now. I'm just preaching to me. <laughs> And sent them two by two before their face to every city and place where he himself was about to go. <laughs> How did he go? He will go through us. Go over to, they come back now. Now watch this, verse 17. 
And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us to your name. They were casting out demons, healing the sick, and they didn't even have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have the Holy Spirit. We have the power from on high. Amen. And what are we doing with it? Amen. And I don't mean this from condemnation. I'm just saying, I think we're getting in a, in a rut. You know, I'm saved, praise God. I go to church once a week and I'm happy, glory to God. I'm going to go to heaven someday. But I think we forget the importance of who you really are. Why on earth did God choose you? You know, and I say this one, and this, this makes people mad, but I can't help it. Would you have married you? Why on earth did God choose you? Of all people. I, you don't know how many times I've asked that question. Why me, Lord? You know, there's certain people I'm going to be able to touch, but you, some of the people you can touch, I can't. We all have a special gift. That's in 1 Peter 4.10. Each one has a gift. That's a charisma gift. Minister it to one another. This is not the pastor's job to be the minister. It's our job to be the ministers. Servants of the Most High God. And then he goes on, verse 18, he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Why? Because the Lord already went there. He had already prepared the place. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Come on, that's what we rejoice about. Don't get caught up on the works. Get caught up on Him. And then listen to what He says. Remember, these guys weren't scholars. In that hour, Peter rejoiced in... Excuse me. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and reveal them to babies. Even so, Father, for it seems good in your sight. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about that. If you understand any of this this morning, you're chosen. Amen. When, when he asked Peter, well, who do you think, who do you say I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Lord says, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. So when you're trying to witness, especially to family, that's the hardest thing. When you're trying to witness to somebody and they're dead, understand they are dead. Man. And try talking to a cadaver and see how much it responds. I remember this one preacher said, you, you guys that just get out of Bible school, you really hurt us because it takes you about four years to get it right once you come out. He says, I want you to go spend at least four years preaching to cadavers. That way you won't cause problems in the church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go, anyway. <laughs> we got to go. What I'm getting at is we've got to go back to Jesus Spirit. Amen. The power is in the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive power. Yes. Amen. It's real. Power. After. When? After the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the Holy Spirit comes upon. You have the indwelling Christ, then you have the, the anointing that comes upon us if you ask for it. And it's very simple. I'll show you that, that scripture, chapter 12. Excuse me. Chapter 13. Hmm. Should be chapter 11. <laughs> it says in verse 11, 13. If you then, being each one of those chapters has something special in it, but this one, here's the one I wanted. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who would ask Him? 
And there's, there's a scripture that says they're afraid of the signs. People are afraid of Pentecostals because of all the bad publicity we've had, like the rolling on the floor, barking like dogs. Uh, you're always, even when you fall out under the power, you're still in control. And, and foolishness is foolishness. I don't see that in the Bible anywhere. And we've had to stop that a lot of times, especially on the road. You know, we, emotions is different than, than the real thing. Amen. If I know that you can't walk and I see you running around, I'm going to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> but if I see you acting like a jerk, I'm not going to say, praise the Lord. Because <laughs> we scare people. Amen. And uh, on your sheet, oh, there's just so much here. That, but let me say, yeah. But real quickly, go over to Acts chapter 8. And here's, here's a, the first, one of the first deacons. There was de seven deacons chosen. And one by the name of Philip. And the first martyr was Stephen. And he, when he looked up into the heavens, he saw the Lord standing at the right hand of the Father. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine these people getting ready to stone you to death? And you, wow! I see the heavens open, and Jesus is come on over. You know, <laughs> and, and what happens? He gets, he gets, and he says, "Lord, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing." Seriously, they don't know what they're doing. Amen. And so, what happens when persecution hits the church? Do you know the church grows the fastest when we're being persecuted? Mm -hmm. Isn't that awful to think this? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I was telling uh, one of my daughters yesterday that, uh, you know, Clinton from, from Africa, he was really upset with us because he used to watch uh, TV and see nothing in their refrigerator and, and we're, we're over indulging. And it took him a long time to forgive us. Because he, he had all that resentment. Because why are we starving as a Christian and you're not? And so uh, we've got to be so careful how we talk to people. You know, we can't, we can't put ourselves, if you have never been down with some of the indigenous people, at the one church I think I counted two pairs of shoes. And we said, in Mexico that happens? <laughs> yeah, no water in that village at all. And, and we don't understand that they're, they can't go to the hose out here and turn it on and drink it. We're so blessed is what I'm trying to say. But are we telling God we're blessed? Are we complaining? When you start complaining, go to the hospital and see what complaining really means. So now, so Saul's going out putting us in jail and all that stuff. And, and then uh, he's making havoc of the church. Look at verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went. They went someplace. After eight years, remember in Acts 1.8, they said, the Lord said, you're going to receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Jerusalem in Judea, in all, the other, most parts of the earth. They still haven't less left Jerusalem. And they went out. <clears throat> Until we, Jerusalem represents the church. When we go out, let's just say for lunch today, we go out today for lunch. We're going to the hospital to have lunch. And, and at lunch, we're rude to people. Okay, think about it. Here comes this waitress. She doesn't look right. Maybe she just found out there's a loss in the family. Maybe she just found out something. And we see this guy, because I've had to repent of this, that uh, a lot of older people are in a lot of pain. And I found out, don't mock it. And so, how are we handling ourselves in this time? See, we can go to the hospital and never once share Jesus Christ, and yet people are going to see us pray over the food. Say, I wonder why we don't do that. And I've had people come up, told me, they said, man, thank you for praying. We're not doing it for show. You know, I have been with evangelists. 
Now, Lord Jesus, <laughs> you know, and, and give a sermon on the, all those going to hell. <laughs> this is no time for that. I wonder why they, we, they think the way they do about us. Save these poor sinners. Well, we ought to get saved this morning. We're all poor sinners, even if we're born again. Come on. Look at some of the stuff we've got from the past. We still haven't got rid of it. So how can you point the finger at me for being bald when you're wearing glasses? Come on, that's basically what's going on. Therefore, verse 4, what's it there for? Because everything you just said. Those who were scattered went everywhere preaching. What were they preaching? Who's the word? They were preaching Jesus. Paul said, all I want to know is Jesus Christ and him, Christ and him crucified. Do we really know Christ? Amen. See, we know Jesus as Savior, but we know do we know the Christ that's the anointing, that's in you, that's upon you, that says in my name, you're going to cast out demons, you're going to speak with new tongues, Amen. Amen. you're going to handle serpents if you drink deadly poisons and they're not going to hurt you, you're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to, they shall recover. You know, people don't understand, a lot of people recover by dying. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Think about that. I just hope it's quick for me whenever it happens. I don't want to have you come see me at the hospital. Oh! <laughs> see, as you get older, you start thinking about these things. And I heard a preacher say the other day, you could be killed in a second in a car wreck today. Are we really ready? See, if you're ready, that's great, but I don't want to suffer in the car, car wreck. Well, yeah, you might want to witness to somebody. Yeah, I'm going to witness anyway, but do I have to be crippled to do it? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Be careful what we're saying. Then Philip, now wait a minute, Philip was a deacon. He was a, he was a, a waiter. He was one of the seven to wait on tables. He wasn't one of the apostles. These signs will follow who? Those who have believed. Well, Philip believed. Amen. And look what happens. He becomes an evangelist, by the way, in chapter 21. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And this is a region. It's a region. It's not really a city. It's a whole region. And preached Christ to them. And multitudes with one accord heeding, heeded the things spoken by Philip. Hearing and what? Seeing. What were they seeing? Miracles. miracles. See, we don't believe miracles are for the day. Why should they happen? That died with the apostles. See, we've heard all this, excuse me, garbage, which is very unscriptural. This book is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I change not, says the Lord. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out, and many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. I'd like to see great joy in here this morning before we leave. But are we expecting? What are we really expecting this morning? Uh, they prayed for me before. Nothing ever happens when they pray for me. Well, then God's a liar. <laughs> I'm serious. Come on. We're, we're, we're becoming liars. We don't believe what we're saying. And anyway, there's a lot in here. And just closing down, I just came, some of these just came to me. How do we go out into the world? Now, these are not in order. I just put them down as I thought of them. Let your light so shine before men they see your good works and glorify God. Matthew 5.16 A prayer. 1 Timothy 2.1 says the first thing we're supposed to pray for is all men. We're supposed to pray for the lost. Amen. Come on. Amen. Number three. Give out tracts. How hard is it to do this when you're done and make sure you leave a 20% tip? How hard is it for you to put this in the urinal at the, at the restaurant. You don't even have to open up your mouth. You see, have you ever done that? You just see somebody, hey, I got some good news. It looks like, is, are you troubled? 
And you know, most of the time, people will take it. And they'll thank you. In Mexico, I don't care if they're handed, they got machine guns. <laughs> you hand them a track, and they sit there and read it while they're searching your stuff in the car. <laughs> no, don't they? They do. And you never see any of them throw them on the ground. Go to the mall and try it. Watch them. They're all on the ground. Mm -hmm. See, we're knocking people. We, we should. We, if we want to knock somebody, knock us. Support missions. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together. Shall men give unto your bosoms. And giving is beyond your, your what I call tithing. Giving is something mm -hmm. beyond what you normally give. Pray for boldness. That is such a key. Where is our boldness? My God, we got the power of Most High that created the heavens and earth living in us and we're shy? Man. I don't think we have an excuse anymore, you dear. I don't. Man. If I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and God says, go speak to this person, I'm going to do it. To the best of my ability... I'm not going to go up and blabber. Hey, you over there, you filthy sinner, you, you know. Trust me, you don't win anybody that way. <laughs> Pray for open doors. Paul in prison prays for open doors. The Lord sends us out just as he sent, as he was sent out. How was he sent out? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. What if we could get rid of this oppression? What could, what could happen to our bodies? You know, the number one killer today is basically oppression. It's, it's the stress of living. And, and number nine, I put out, no ministry of pew warming in the Bible. <laughs> we all have a ministry. Amen. Amen. Number 10. We must become doers of the word, doers of the word and not hearers only. We gotta, you want to see God move, you're going to have to move. You want somebody to love you, you're going to have to love them. You want a friend, you've got to become a friend. Give and it shall be given. Give of yourself and it will be given back. That's the way it works. Draw nigh to God, He'll come to you. And then I put down, uh, God so loved the world, and with His love is in us, we can love others. If you can't love others, that means you're not born again. Or you've got some real problems. And you know, your mind can take over everything. That's your soulish realm. And then, number 12, go. <laughs> you know what? You try it. You might like it. Amen. Amen. The Lord, I ask you to bless this word today. Because you want us to be... Li you said we were li uh, living epistles, read of all men. Help us to understand, Lord, that we're here for a reason. And the number one reason is to be a light for you. You saved us, Lord. Now it's our job to just be a light and believe your word. Lord, in Jesus' name today, we declare that we're going to become like little children when it comes to believing the Bible. We're going to cast out demons. We're going to speak with new tongues. We're going to handle serpents. We're not going to take any of that garbage Bible anymore. We're going to just, we want the truth. And we're going to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory and the praise. And we know if the Son is going to get glorified to the Father, you'll answer our prayers. In Jesus' name, have your way in and through us. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Wait.